All right, it's time to kick off 2023's videos with a solo playthrough of Pokemon Yellow with Doduo. When I first looked at this thing, I was actually pretty excited to use it because its stats are a lot better than I thought. It has 35 HP, 85 attack, 45 defense, 35 special, and 75 speed, which gives it a 14.5% chance to crit. So it's a fast physical attacker, and luckily in this case it has the move pool to back this up, because both normal type moves and flying type moves deal physical damage in generation 1. It starts with Peck, a move that gets the same type attack bonus, and then through level up it learns Drill Peck, which is probably the best flying type move in the entire game. After all, in generation 1, Fly is only base 70 power. Power. It was later upgraded to 90 base power, by the way. And uh, let's be real, Sky Attack is just awful. It charges up on the first turn, you are not invulnerable. I really wish that it worked the same way as Fly. Anyways. Finally on its level up learn set, it gets access to Agility, which is going to be fantastic for triggering the badge boost glitch. So if Doduo needs a little bit more damage, it's going to be able to get it. Now through TMs and HMs, it doesn't have access to a wide range of moves, but it does get access to Body Slam, which is going to get the same type attack bonus. So going into this challenge, I thought that Doduo was set up for success. After all, I think it's very obvious what its final move set is going to be. Drill Pack and Body Slam for same type attack bonus moves. Agility to use the badge boost and Mimic to steal important moves from the opponent when I need them. And eventually I can remove Mimic in favor of rest for the champion fight. So let's see if Doduo can Dodo it. After delivering Oak's parcel, I decided to do a little bit of training on Route 1 so that I can take Doduo up to level 8. By the way, it has a medium fast growth rate, which is pretty good for these challenges. It's the second worst experience rate in the game, but it is nowhere near as bad as slow, so Doduo is going to be fine. The reason I wanted to level up to level 8 is so I'm over a damage rounding threat threshold, and then I'm going to fight the rival on Route 22. Now if you're a longtime viewer of this channel, you'll probably think this is a bit of a strange choice. And the reason is that the rival picks what he evolves his Eevee into based on the outcome of the first two fights. So if I win here with Doduo, he's going to choose Jolteon. Now that probably doesn't make much sense to you because like Jolteon is a powerful electric type and Doduo is a flying type Pokemon. So I should explain myself here. Number one, Doduo needs as much experience in the early game as it can get because I'm going to have to defeat Brock with just Peck. Like, I am definitely going to beat Brock before level 20 when Doduo learns its first level up move in the form of Growl. However, the much more important reason to win here is so that the rival evolves into Jolteon and doesn't have Magneton on his team. That thing has decent defenses, and it never misses with Thunderbolt, whereas Jolteon can miss with Thunder Wave, and it also has lower defenses. And it also comes at the very end of the fight, which is really convenient, because Doduo is going to have agility set up by that point, so I will move first against it. So I win against the rival here, and that ensures that he picks Jolteon. Now it's time to head north to Viridian Forest, and in here there are five trainers. I'm going to fight all of them today with Doduo. Because of its high attack stat, and also it has Peck, which is super effective against most of the bugs here, I don't really have anything to worry about, at least in terms of battles that is, because I'm always a little bit on my toes hoping that I'm going to run into a Pidgey so that I can catch it and have my flying mule. And yes, this is important even when I'm doing a solo challenge with a flying Pokemon, because fly is really bad and I don't want to use it with Doduo. Also, in Generation 1, there's no move deleter, so I really do not want to teach this thing an HM move. I luck out, catch my Pidgey, and then I defeat the final bug catcher, and with him out of the way, Doduo is only level 12, which is one level under a damage rounding threshold. So, let's do some more training in the forest, get to level 13, and now I'm ready to try Brock for the first time. I don't think I'm going to win here, but I just want to test things out and see where I'm at. Brock leads with Geodude, I can only use Peck, and wow, it actually does a lot of damage. Okay, that was a critical hit. However, when I don't get a critical hit, I'm still doing a decent amount of damage, so this is looking really promising. I am definitely going to knock the Geodude out. However, because Doduo has low defense and low HP, it takes a lot of damage in the process, and I move on to the Onyx with only 12 hit points remaining. And here things slow down because Onyx is just really not taking very much damage. I almost take it down to half health and then it knocks Doduo out. So let's do some more training. I skipped the trainer in Brock's gym, so I'll defeat him now. 
After that, I head back to the forest and continue training against the bugs. This is quite fast. At level 15, I decided to come back and face Brock again. So at level 13, Geodude's tackles were doing 5 damage, but now they're only doing 4. Plus I have more HP and I'm dealing more damage, which means I managed to move on to the Onyx with green health remaining. So that's really good. I'm also doing a lot more damage to it. However, there's a problem here because when it uses Bide, I have to attack into it. I really wish I had Growl here just so that I could stall it out. And as a result, when it pays back energy, it knocks Doduo out. Still, victory isn't far off. I did go back to the forest and train up. However, before I hit the next damage rounding threshold at level 18, I just decided to come back and face Brock at level 17. I was feeling pretty confident here. I take the Geodude down. I have nine more hit points than I had last time for the Onyx. I get a critical hit against it right away, which is so convenient, but it really just needs to not use Bide early on in the fight so that I can get a victory. And in this case, it doesn't, so Doduo knocks Onyx out, and with that, I am moving on. So here's the thing about the next section of the game. Because I've had to overlevel for Brock, I am just going to sweep through all of these trainers. After all, the first guy on Route 3 only has bug Pokemon. After that, I head into Mount Moon. First, I'm going to fight the Super Nerd. He has good experience yields. Then after picking up the Rare Candy, I'm going to fight the Bug Catcher because I have super effective damage and it's basically going to be free experience. After that, I fight the Last. She has Grass-type Pokemon. And then I defeat the Mandatory Super Nerd. Grab myself, of course, the Dome Fossil. And with that, I move on to Jesse and James. By this time, Doduo is level 20, and uh, yeah, it just stomps through the villain's team. And that means I've made it to Cerulean City. Now I do have a choice to make here. I could face either Misty or the rival on Nugget Bridge next. And I think it just makes more sense to face the rival today because Misty has powerful special moves. And if you look at Doduo's stats in the bottom left, it's a uh, special stat is not very impressive. So let's take the rival on. So the rival leads with Spiro. I'm really hoping for a one hit here and Peck gets it because of a crit, nice. Santru's next, hopefully it will not use sand attack. Okay, it does, I miss. It misses its second sand attack, which is perfect. I go for another Peck and it misses again. Santru gets another sand attack in. All right, this is getting really bad. Like I think I'm actually gonna lose this fight. However, when I finally get my second hit in, it does manage to take the Santru out, so that's good. However, the following Rattata is actually quite good at dealing damage. It has the same type of attack bonus on both Quick Attack and Hyper Fang, plus it can lower your defense with Tail Whip. It hits with Quick Attack, taking Doduo down to just above half health, and then I hit with Peck, and it takes it out in one hit. Okay, that's perfect. I am feeling a little bit more optimistic, even after the Sand Attacks. Eevee's next. It has lower defense than it has special, so Peck is pretty good here. I managed to do more than half with my first hit, but then Dodu just like keeps missing and the Eevee hits me all the way down to orange health. But then I get one more Peck in and the rival is no more. All right, so Doduo is gonna have no problems on Nugget Bridge. Let's just skip ahead to Misty's gym. Here I'll just mention, you'll notice like the junior trainer walks up to me, talks to me, and then I just like walk by her. You've probably noticed this in all my other videos and you go like, why aren't the trainers battling you? This is uh, the powers of video editing. I just wanna make sure I'm not showing you stuff when you don't need to see it and it's like cluttering up the screen. Anyways, with that explanation out of the way, let's take on Misty. She leads with Staryu. Now, at this point, I actually have an option between either Peck or Fury Attack. Fury Attack is a little bit worse because it has a lower accuracy, and if it hits only two times, then it does less damage. So I go for Peck against the Staryu because I figure it's pretty weak, and I get a critical hit so it goes down without any problems. Doduo levels up to level 25. This is over damage rounding threshold. Perfect because Starmie is next. It comes out and, uh, oh no, it has 56 speed and my Doduo has 55. So Starmie moves first, uses his bubble beam and it does almost half. I go for Peck, looks like it's gonna be a three hit. It takes me to orange health. My Peck takes it to orange health, but then it uses bubble beam and Doduo goes down. So I think there's an easy solution here. After I knock the Staryu out, which actually does do damage in this second fight, I move on to the Starmie and I'm just gonna go for fury attack here because if I get more than two hits, it's gonna be doing a lot of damage. And I get incredible luck here because fury attack gets a critical hit. And in generation one, when a multi-hit move gets a crit, it does the same amount of damage with every other successive hit. And this is perfect because the crits bypass stat changes and Starmie just raised its defense with Harden. And it looks like I'm only gonna knock the Starmie out if I get a five hit. And in this case, I get it. So that's it, Misty is no more. Now in my videos, I like to talk about a lot of the random trainers that are scattered across Kanto. 
You might be like, why talk about these people? Well, it's typically the case that the trainers I discuss are trainers that have the potential to knock me out. For instance, this rocket has a drowsy that has hypnosis and disable as well as confusion. So he causes a lot of problems for some Pokemon. And I was hoping here with Doduo, it would just knock the drowsy out in one hit but it doesn't, it survives and uses hypnosis, which actually connects and puts Doduo to sleep. Okay, so uh, please wake up. I would really like to just knock the drowsy out. And luckily for me today, I do wake up and I manage to take the victory, but that was actually pretty close. Next up is the junior trainer with three Pidgeys. I call her Sandy. And in this case, I know that I'm gonna outspeed. I just really want Peck to get the one hit. And it does, so she's not a problem. And with that victory, I can now head to the SSN and pick up the TM for Body Slam. This is going to be my go-to move for pretty much the rest of the playthrough. After all, it has five more power than Drill Peck, and it also has the chance to cause paralysis. I also pick up the TM for Rest. What? Oh my gosh, okay, my fiance just messaged me and said she just found another shiny, so I have to go check that out now. I will come back to this voiceover and let you know which shiny she found, so uh, yeah, be right back. Okay, so she got a shiny Shinx, and this is pretty lucky for her because she does not yet have the shiny charm, and she also found a shiny yesterday, which was a shiny Sneasel. Unfortunately for me, I have still not found any shinies in Scarlet and Violet, so I'm hoping that I'll find one soon. By the way, keep tweeting at me, uh, at Psychic Flying, whenever you find a shiny Venomoth. It's always awesome hearing about when people find this awesome water ice type and add it to their team. Okay, so back to the playthrough. I was easily able to defeat the rival, and now it's time to take on Surge. So you might expect this fight to be hard for Doduo. After all, Surge has a level 28 Raichu and Doduo is only level 27. It does have nice health, but really it's not gonna survive a Thunderbolt. However, Surge is probably one of the worst trainers in this entire game. Like he doesn't even feel like a gym leader most times. This time Raichu moves first. Once again, Doduo is just a little bit slower. In this case, six points slower. He uses Mega Punch doing almost half. I go for Body Slam, which takes the Raichu down to orange health and causes paralysis. So I outspeed on the next turn and knock it out. Goodbye, Surge. Up next is the gauntlet between Cerulean City and Celadon City. First is the Wrapping Lass. Luckily, Peck is getting the one hit on all of her grass Pokemon. So yeah, this isn't gonna be a problem. Ah, uh, I got a Gen 1 miss on the Bellsprout and it uses Wrap against me. So that's just an annoying waste of time. You might wonder here why I'm using Peck instead of Body Slam because Peck actually has lower damage even though it is super effective. Well, I'm actually conserving my body slams for later on in the tunnel. And as you can see, this was a good choice because once I get to the self-destructing hiker, I only have six uses of body slam left and five of those are gonna be used on the trainers after him. However, body slam really isn't gonna be useful against his rock ground types, but Doduo has access to another strategy, which is to use growl, lower their attack stats, and by doing so survive all of the self-destructs. But in this case, the Geodude goes for self-destruct and it gets a gen one miss. I cannot believe that. Absolutely amazing. Oh gosh. Anyways, so uh, Doduo got pretty lucky there. Against the next Geodude, it gets significantly less lucky because it self-destructs after only one use of Growl. However, it doesn't even do half damage to me, so I think if I can get two Growls off against the Graveler, I should survive its hit too. Doduo levels up to level 30 with this experience, and I teach Drill Peck in the place of Peck. Okay, now time for the Graveler. And I luckily get so many Growls in here. The unfortunate thing is that, of course, this Graveler also has Tackle and Rock Throw, so it does a lot of damage to me before it finally goes for self-destruct. But I've lowered its attack enough, so I hang on, and with that, I've cleared him on my first attempt. In Celadon City, I explore the Rocket Hideout. In here, I want to collect a lot of useful items like this PP up, and then later on, the Rare Candy. After that, I use Dig to escape, and then I head into the department store. After selling all my items, I have enough money to buy five vitamins. And for Doduo, I think that protein makes the most sense so that I boost its attack. After all, its typing in combination with its speed gives me great hope that I'm gonna have an easy time throughout the mid game. After making Doduo very buff, I head into the elevator and teleport into Erica's gym. Uh, again, the powers of video editing. Now you'll notice that I'm doing a save here in front of this last because I am gonna defeat every single trainer in her gym. And I just wanna take a moment and explain why I did that save. The reason is that because of the AI of the trainers in this gym, the first Pokemon can use Stun Spore, cutting your speed, and then their second Pokemon can just endlessly use Wrap. 
There have been a lot of cases where I have blacked out and lost an entire run because of this, because I haven't saved since like maybe the self-destructing hiker or something like that. So I now do this save in every single run that I play when I want to train here, just in case this awful situation plays out. So if you want to see a situation where that actually happens, go check out my drowsy live stream that I did in December. It's uh, yeah. Very awful. Okay, so with all the trainers out of the way, it's now time to take on Erica, and I expect that this fight is going to be very easy. She starts with Tangela. I go for Drill Peck. Okay, I only have four PP left, so I'm hoping I'm going to one-hit everything. The Vine Monster goes down with one hit that wasn't a crit, so that does mean that the Weeping Bale and the Gloom are also going to be one-hits, because they have much less defense. All right, so that was definitely the easiest gym leader yet. And from here, things are not going to get much harder. After all, Koga is next, and he's basically a bug specialist in Pokemon Yellow. However, I do have to obtain the Poke Flute first, so I'm going to have to defeat the rival in Pokemon Tower. Luckily, Drill Peck is really good. Like, this move is so awesome. I remember as a kid just using Zapdos and spamming it on everything and just being like, yes, this electric bird is so good. Here you'll probably be like, wait, Scott, didn't you knock out Zapdos? So yes, I did knock Zapdos out. And uh, when I finally reset my cartridge, the second time I faced Zapdos, I threw my Master Ball at it because I did not want to have that situation play out again. In this case, Drill Pack actually one hits all of the rival's Pokemon. So yeah, that was an easy fight. Two floors above, there's this Chandler, and uh, she causes so many problems for me with a lot of Pokemon. Luckily, Doduo isn't going to struggle today, but I do want to mention here that I have commissioned art for her. By the way, if you want to have your own avatar drawn, you can contact Serena with the link in the description. At the top of Pokemon Tower, I defeat Jesse and James. This gives me the Poke Flute, so I can speed through the Safari Zone, and now I'm ready to take on Koga's gym. Here's another save that I always do. After all, the jugglers in his gym can be very annoying if you have a Generation 1 miss, or you just don't have the damage ranges to knock their Pokemon out. However, in this case, Doduo is just way too strong. It sweeps through all of them with ease. So now, let's take on Koga himself. So his first three Pokemon are Venonats, which aren't particularly strong. They can be very annoying, however, with Sleep Powder, Toxic, Psybeam, if it causes confusion, Supersonic, and Psychic, which can drop your special. So I really hope that Doduo is going to be able to KO all of them with Drill Peck. And in this case, it does. So all that's left is Venomoth. Now this Rock Electric type is very scary for Doduo, especially because it outspeeds, it uses Psychic, and takes me all the way down to Orange Health. Okay. Drill Peck has to one hit here. And unfortunately for me, it doesn't. Venomoth survives with red health, and that means it's gonna move first, but in this case, it just goes for Toxic. So yeah, Doduo wins. As I surfed to Cinnabar Island, I was reflecting on that fight, and I was just wondering if there was anything that I could do to improve my odds there. And I don't really think that I could have done anything, because if I had given Doduo five Carbos, it still wouldn't have outsped the Venomoth. And training up to a higher level really doesn't make much more sense. I'm excited to reflect on that fight later on when I do a follow-up playthrough, because hopefully I'll be able to find an easier way by the Venomoth. In Pokemon Mansion, I have coded my overlay so that it now displays how many vitamins my Pokemon can take in each stat when I'm here. After all, there is a Calcium and Iron and also a Carbos available here, so I want to be able to show you if I'm able to use those vitamins. And in this case, I am going to be able to. You will note, though, that I don't pick up the iron. After all, I don't think it's that useful. With that out of the way, I dig out, and this takes me back to Saffron City. Now, I haven't done too much optional training in this playthrough, and I'm expecting that Doduo is going to run into a wall. Either Giovanni's Rhydon, because it has Rock Slide, or potentially Lorelei. After all, she is an Ice-type specialist. So I need to do some training now, and the Fighting Dojo is the perfect place to do this. In here, I actually got the chance to learn Tri-Attack, and I know that I say no in this case. You might be like, that doesn't make sense, like, teach it over Growl. Yes, I definitely should have done that. However, Tri-Attack isn't really that useful in these games, because it has no secondary effect. So it's just a base 80 power move, and uh, Body Slam is just way better. <laughs> With the Dojo Master out of the way, I head into Sylph, and here I use my PP ups, and then I'm ready to face the rival. Okay, so Sand Slash. It's gotta be one of my least favorite Pokemon in all of Pokemon Yellow. How much am I gonna do to it? Well, uh, about half with Body Slam. I guess it's great that I caused paralysis, but ah, uh, it uses a sand attack. Are you kidding me? My next Body Slam misses. Sand Slash is paralyzed. I miss again. Sand Slash uses Poison Sting. Okay, that's not bad. 
I miss again? Are you kidding me? Sandslash goes for Slash. It does so much because it gets a critical hit and then finally I take it out. But I only have orange health left for the rest of the fight, so I'm not feeling confident. I go for Body Slam against the Ninetales, get a critical hit, knocking it out. And now it's time for Cloyster. This is the Pokemon I am most worried about. Even with a critical hit, it survives, uses Aurora Beam, and knocks Doduo out. So I figured that if I didn't get hit by Sand Attack, I might be able to make it through this fight, but it turns out that this isn't a good choice because the Sand Slash can just use Slash right away, taking me under half health. And then my second Body Slam doesn't get the knockout, so this is not a guaranteed two hit. As a result, I think it's time to do more training. After all, there are so many trainers available in Sylph, and after you gain access to the healing room, these battles can be done in fast succession without having to head back to the Pokemon Center. I will just note that there's a rocket outside of the healing room that has a Golbat, a Drowsy, and a Hypno, and he is just awful to fight. Usually I end all of my training in Sylph by fighting him, but in this case I decided to fight him right now because I'm fast and I have a good attack stat. Luckily today Doduo makes it through him very easily. At level 43 I head back to the rival because I'm over a damage rounding threshold and this is going to allow me to knock the Sand Slash out consistently with two hits from Body Slam. Unfortunately I get hit by Sand Attack which is awful. It does badge boost my attack stat which is I guess nice, but it isn't even enough to take the Nine Tails down in one hit. So get hit by Ember. Next is Cloyster. I miss my first Body Slam. It hits Aurora Beam, taking Doduo all the way down to 8 hit points. And then I miss another hit, so that's it. I tried again and uh, uh, the damage rounding threshold does not actually allow me to 2 hit the Sand Slash consistently, so I'm going to need level 45 for this fight. This means that Doduo is now going to learn Agility, which could be useful. But against the rival, it isn't useful, because there's no way for me to get by the Sand Slash without giving it at least one turn to attack. In this case, of course, it uses Sand Attack. I knock the Ninetales out, move on to the Cloister, it hits Aurora Beam, and gets a critical hit, knocking Doduo out. Ah, okay, this is, this is getting a bit frustrating. So in Generation 1, the AI has a 25% chance to miss all moves that alter your Pokémon's stats. Uh, by the way, Sand Attack is one of these moves, but no, Sand Slash does not miss in the next fight. Ah, come on, at least I knock it out on the next turn. Ninetales is next, I knock it out with a single Body Slam and I move on to the Cloister. Please, let this be the fight. I go for Body Slam, it does more than half, paralyzes Cloister, Cloister can't move, I get my second Body Slam in and it goes down. Okay, I should be able to do this now. Body Slam hits the Kadabra, taking it out, and all that's left is the Jolteon. Now, I have full health, so I assume that I'm going to survive a Thundershock. But Doduo is faster, and Body Slam hits, knocking the Punk Rock Doggo out in a single hit. Alright, that frustrating battle is behind me, let's move on. I have to defeat Giovanni at the top of Sylph, and this fight is usually very easy, so I'll just take a moment here to describe why I didn't go to Blaine. After all, if you know the Generation 1 games, you're probably thinking of Red and Blue, and you're like, Blaine is awful. Just go and fight him. Get a special boost, then come back and defeat the rival. However, in yellow version, Blaine is very good, and I've anticipated that Doduo is really going to struggle against him, so that's why I'm trying to complete Sylph now. Interestingly enough here, the Giovanni fight wasn't that straightforward. After all, I have no good moves against the Rhyhorn. I am really lucky that Doduo has a high attack stat, so I managed to take it out with three hits from not very effective damage. Nidoqueen's last, and my Body Slam takes it out over two turns. So, with Giovanni out of the way, now let's face Sabrina. With 120 speed, I can move first against both the Abra and the Kadabra, so the only potential for her to deal damage to Doduo is with the Alakazam. So, will it be able to do it? Well, she just goes for an X defend, so that's pretty useless. Body Slam hits and uh, yeah, it gets a critical hit bypassing the X defend and knocking the Alakazam out. So that was an easy victory. But now it's time to face Blaine. The reason that I said that Blaine was going to be a challenge is specifically because his Pokemon are blended attackers. They have strong normal type moves and they also have strong fire type moves. Also because of their levels, they're going to survive my hits, and that means they'll get at least one chance to attack. And that leads me to the second reason that Blaine is so difficult in yellow. See this Ninetales? Yeah, it can use Tail Whip, which lowers your defense, and then Rapidash and Arcanine come out next, and they both have really excellent attack stats. So Rapidash and Arcanine are going to hit really hard with Stomp and Takedown. You can see this playing out here when Rapidash uses Stomp and does almost half damage to my Doduo. Uh, that's frustrating. If the Arcanine goes for takedown now, I am definitely finished. 
I use Body Slam. It does more than half because of a critical hit. Arcanine goes for Flamethrower and uh, takes the duo out, even without a critical hit. So I decided to try that again, hoping that it would get luckier against the Ninetales, but I actually uh, get the opposite of luck here. Ninetales uses Flamethrower, which does so much even without a critical hit, but it also burns Doduo, cutting my attack stat. All right, so I, uh, I just reset there. Let's try that again. Luck swings my way a little bit in the next fight because I crit the Ninetales. That's great because it would have got two attacks in because it used Quick Attack in this case. Next is Rapidash. I use Body Slam and it misses Takedown. Okay, that's perfect. Arcanine's next. I go for Body Slam. It does less than half. It strikes back with Flamethrower, taking Doduo all the way down to 14 hit points. And because my next Body Slam doesn't finish it off, I am going to lose if it hits and it does with takedown. Okay, so it seems like I'm getting stuck. After all, my Doduo is almost leveled up, so let's fight one trainer in Blaine's gym and just get over a damage rounding threshold. Maybe this will help? At the start of this next fight, I decided to change up my strategy. I can use agility to badge boost me, and because I'm not going to level up during this fight, I won't lose that boost by the time I get to the Arcanine, and then I should be able to take it out in two hits. Unfortunately, that means that Ninetales gets to lower my defense and hit with Quick Attack, which does so much damage. Like, Quick Attack should not be doing that much. Okay, it got a critical hit, whatever. Okay, still though, I'm moving on to the Rapidash. However, it goes for Stomp, and Doduo just barely survives this on three hit points. All right, I am feeling quite hopeless now. However, there is a way that I could win here, and that's if Arcanine uses Reflect. But because Reflect doubles defense in the damage calculation, that means I'll need another Body Slam if this occurs. So let's see. I go for Body Slam, it does half to the Arcanine, it causes Paralysis, and then Arcanine uses Reflect. Okay, that's perfect. Please just use Reflect again. Yes, the AI has no idea that it's used Reflect once, so it can just use it as many times as it wants. However, Doduo just gets a critical hit with Body Slam and knocks the Arcanine out on the next turn. So I've done it. I have defeated Blaine. However, that is not really confidence inspiring because I expect that the game is going to get a lot harder from here on out. After all, Giovanni is next and he is very good in yellow version as well. He's like the trainer that got the next biggest upgrade. Both Blaine and Giovanni went from complete trash to like very overpowered in these games. Also, I want to be really conscious here of Doduo's speed because the Persian has 135 speed and the Dugtrio has 133 speed. So if I can get 136 speed, then at least I'll move first against all of Giovanni's Pokemon. I fight the two mandatory trainers in Giovanni's gym and then I'm still not level 50. So I go back and I fight this guy. He has two fighting type Pokemon. It's not quite enough experience. Experience. So I can use these spinning pads to go over and fight this guy who has a single Machoke. And by doing that, I get Doduo up to level 50. That brings my speed up to 128. Okay, so I should probably use Roar Candies here until Doduo has enough speed to move first. I use one, which gives me two more speed up to 130. I use another one, two more speed. Okay, so I'm going to need to go to level 54. However, my speed actually jumps up four points on the next level. Now you might be like, why does that happen? And there's actually a lot of rounding that is occurring when your speed stat is being calculated because of how stat experience works. So yeah, I actually just got favorable stat rounding in this case, and that gave me the asymmetrical boost to my speed. I think now it's time to teach Doduo Mimic, because I need counterplay for Rhydon's Rock Slide, and with that, I am ready to face Giovanni. His lead is Doug Trio, and as a flying type, I have a significant advantage against it because it knows Dig, Fissure, and Earthquake, which are all ground type moves. By the way, in Generation 1, Sand Attack is a normal type move, and yes, it can hit flying Pokemon even once it gets the ground type in Generation 2. Still, the Doug Trio is going to randomize its move selection, so there's a chance that it just does nothing to me, and that means I can use Mimic to steal Earthquake. This is very important because then I have super effective damage against the Nidoqueen, Nidoking, and the Rhydon. After that, I use Body Slam and Dugtrio goes down to one hit. Okay, perfect. Next is Persian. I go for Body Slam because it's going to deal the most damage. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to have to take a two hit here. By the way, in Generation 1, normal type moves cannot cause secondary effect status conditions to normal type Pokemon, so no, Body Slam cannot paralyze here. I finish the Persian off, move on to Nidoqueen, I go for Earthquake, and it doesn't KO. 
The Needle Queen strikes back with double kick. So here, Giovanni's AI has an error. It sees that I'm a normal type and then goes double kick. That's super effective. So that's why it's using this move. I think in this case, double kick is the right choice because my defense has been lowered by Screech, but ordinarily Thunder would be the much better move to go for. I knock the Nido Queen out, Nido King's next. I just barely don't finish it off. And here we can see that Giovanni is randomizing between double kick and Thunder because the Nido King tries for the elemental move. However, it just misses and I knock it out. Okay, time for the ride on. I go for Earthquake, it does half, and then it hits Rock Slide, which knocks Doduo out. The thing is, I'm coming out of that fight with a lot of confidence. Here's why. After I mimic Earthquake on the Doug Trio, I can just set up agility three times while Giovanni does nothing. I'm just really hoping that he doesn't use Sand Attack here. In this case, he doesn't, and that means that I've badge boosted myself, which gives Body Slam the one hit on Persian, and then it should give Earthquake a one hit on the Needle Queen. Well, I got a critical hit there, so that's good. Next is Needle King. I go for Earthquake again, and it also goes down to one hit. All right, so I'm gonna need two hits on the Rhydon for sure. It has great defenses. However, now I have full health for it, so I think think that I can survive one rock slide. It goes for it, and Doduo just barely hangs on with 15 hit points. I strike back with Earthquake and take it down. So with that, Doduo has finished off the entire gym challenge, and now there are only six trainers left. Of them, one's the champion, and four of them are elite. The first elite trainer, of course, is the rival on Route 22. Now I just really want to mention here that sometimes I make misplays, like at least once in every video, and uh, occasionally there are major misplays. In this case, against the Sand Slash, I know that if I use Mimic and just spam A through Mimic, I'll mimic the move Slash because it's in Sand Slash's first move slot. This move is excellent if you have more than 64 base speed because then you always get critical hits with it. That means that it's going to double Slash's effective power. I need to program my overlay so that it displays this, but in this case, Slash is going to have an effective power around 210. It'll be a little bit lower than that because of Generation 1 math reasons. And I figured that this would be an awesome move to use against the rival because it's doing more damage than Body Slam and Drill Peck in the case that those moves are neutral. However, the unfortunate thing that this exposes me to is that I can take two hits from the Sand Slash, and this fight doesn't go well as a result, and I really should have used Slash against the Cloister. I think it would have done half anyways. Uh. Okay, easy fix. Two shot the Sand Slash with Body Slam, Drill Peck the Execute, and on Nine Tails, which has terrible moves, set up one agility to boost my speed. This also conveniently badge boosts my damage so that I two shot the Cloister, and then I outspeed the Kadabra, of course, I used agility, knock it out in one hit, and all that's left is the Jolteon, so I just need to have the damage range to knock it out. And I don't! It takes it down to red health! Ugh! But, the, the trainer I mean, uses a potion, and because of that, I knocked the Jolteon out. So I've made it through Victory Road to the League, and now the trainer standing in my way is Lorelei. And honestly, when I was playing this challenge, I wasn't very worried about her. At this point, Doduo is getting a great time for a first playthrough, and I was feeling quite confident. After all, I do have 8 rare candies left over, which can take me up to level 63 over 3 more damage rounding thresholds. Plus, I have Mimic, Agility, Drill Pack, Body Slam, it's a great moveset, I should be able to do this. I'm going to feed 5 rare candies right now to take Doduo up to level 60, and this keeps 3 rare candies to reset my experience points so that I don't level up mid-fight, and then I can set up with Agility for the badge boost. Because I was very confident in this strategy, I saved the game, and now let's face Lorelei. First is Dugong, and I'm really hoping that it's going to use Rest here after I do some damage to it so I can set up with Agility. The unfortunate thing though about its AI, like this specific Pokemon's AI, is that on some turns it has good AI, and on some turns it just randomizes its move selection. So in order to get Rest, I need to get one of the turns where it randomizes its move selection, and then selects that move out of the four options. In this case, it goes for Aurora Beam first turn, lowering Doduo's attack, and... All right, that did a lot of damage and it really messed my attack stat up, so that's not good. I do knock the Dugong out, move on to the Cloister, and I really wanted to see how much damage Body Slam would do. And with a critical hit, it does more than half to Cloister. It causes Paralysis, which is nice, but the Cloister still moves, uses Ice Beam, and knocks Doduo out. Still, I am going to get luckier eventually and Dugong will use Rest. In this case, though, I get a different kind of luck because Body Slam crits and knocks it out in one hit. Okay, that's perfect. I go for Body Slam on the Cloister, but without a crit, it doesn't do half, so that's not good. 
Cloyster goes for Ice Beam and Doduo just barely survives on 6 hit points. By the way, the Cloyster only has one Ice type move, which means it's always going to pick it. In the next fight, I crit the Dugong again. By the way, if you save and then reset with the exact same frame count, and you're on an RNG seed that gives you the critical hit, you can sometimes repeat this over and over and over again. I am never trying to do that because my rules do not allow me to use RNG manipulation, so if I notice that that's a trend that's occurring, I will actually take a few extra frames to do something just to try and break that trend. I will actually note here that I have actually revised my rules for this year for these playthroughs, so check those out in the description if you haven't already. The revisions that are applicable to Pokemon Yellow don't actually affect Doduo's playthrough at all, and they don't actually affect any of the results that I've collected to this date. So, yeah, it doesn't really impact Pokemon Yellow in any meaningful way. In the next fight, I managed to get to the Slowbro, which is awesome, but it just uses Psychic and knocks Doduo out. Like, at this point, I was starting to get worried. This is not going well. However, in the next fight, Lorelei gives me a gift because Dugong goes to sleep with rest, and this lets me get two agilities in before it wakes up. I go for Body Slam, and I was hoping that it would one-hit, but it doesn't. Dugong strikes back with Takedown. That's okay, no Aurora Beam, and I didn't get my Attack Lord, so I knock it out and move on to the Cloister. Now, the badge boosts from agility allow me to two-hit this thing, and I also cause Paralysis, so I knock it out. Yes, I've made it to the Slowbro with green health. I go for Body Slam, it gets a critical hit, taking Slowbro down to orange health. It goes for Withdraw, which is perfect because then my next Body Slam finishes it off. Okay, I think I've actually done it this time. Jinx is quite frail physically, so I can just knock it out with a single Body Slam, and all that's left is Lorelei's Ace, Lapras. My attack takes it to red, which was a critical hit. It actually did more damage than it would have if I had my badge boosts. But then Lapras strikes back with Blizzard, and uh, yeah, it knocks Doduo out from green health. I tried the fight again, and here we can see actually a downside to getting a critical hit against the Dugong, because then you can't set up before the Cloister comes out, which means it's going to survive two body slams, and that means it will use two Ice Beams and knock Doduo out. So the only way to win if you crit the Dugong is if you paralyze the Cloister and it misses one move. It's definitely time to investigate some alternative strategies. So one approach to this is to improve my damage ranges. I can use three rare candies, take Doduo up to level 63, and I am hoping that this will give me the two hit on the Cloister. This is going to be a perfect test because I get a critical hit against the Dugong, knocking it out in one turn. Next is Cloister, and I also get a critical hit here, so I'm going to knock it out in two hits. Unless its first Ice Beam freezes Doduo. In Generation 1, there's no chance that you unthaw, so that's a reset. In the next fight, Dugong does so much damage with Aurora Beam, and I just decided to chance it here and set up agility. Luckily, the Dugong goes for rest healing, and that means I get all three agilities off before I knock it out. Cloister's next, but unfortunately I get a critical hit, which cuts my damage slightly. I would have done more with the badge boosts in this case when I set up three agilities. As a result, I don't get anywhere close to knocking it out, and Ice Beam finishes me off. Okay, it's time to evaluate other options. Doduo is definitely stuck now. One strategy that's very common for me to use is to use Mimic to take Slowbro's Amnesia and set up. This way I have a higher special stat, and that means that the Lapras probably won't knock me out with the single Blizzard. However, to really do this reliably, I need to be able to heal when the Slowbro attacks me. That way, as I set up, I take less and less damage, I can heal more consistently, and so rest is probably going to be needed here. And that brings us back to Doduo duo's move pool, because I need a way to attack Agatha's ghosts. By the way, there are only five moves that Doduo has that can actually do this. Peck, Drill Peck, Mimic, Sky Attack, and Fly. Yes, you can use Mimic to steal the first Gengar's Lick or Mega Drain. Obviously, don't steal Mega Drain. That's just a terrible idea. But yes, it does do damage to the ghosts. What this means is I'm actually going to have to take a damage cut because I can't use Body Slam anymore. I really want to maintain Drill Peck through the rest of the league. After all, Sky Attack is awful. It has 90% accuracy, only 5 PP, and you get hit once for free when you use it. And I really do not want to use Fly. It is so much worse than Drill Peck or Body Slam. I get very lucky in this first fight because I actually managed to take the Cloister out. It really should have finished me here. Anyways, I'm moving on to the Slowbro, so I'm going to have to risk it here either way. If I use Rest, it could set up Amnesia and then hit me with like Surf and Psychic. So maybe I should steal Amnesia first turn. I decide to go for it and chance things. Slowbro uses its own Amnesia. All right. After that, because I have the move I need, I decide to use Rest to heal up. Slowbro doesn't do much while I'm asleep, but the turn I wake up, it hits with a huge Psychic, taking Doduo down to red health. And that is not good because I need to set up to minimize that damage. It hits another Psychic, which lowers my special, 
And uh, as a result, Doduo goes down. So I lost a couple more times. And here I want to show you this footage, which is basically after that reset, I have to teach rest in the place of body slam. And then after doing that, I have to use three rare candies to bring Doduo up to level 63. By the way, every time I do this, I have to cancel the evolution animation. Some people have asked me if I should mod out this sequence. And yes, that is definitely possible. It's very easy. However, I don't really like to change multiple things about the game. It's sort of a slippery slope, like if I change this, then like I'm gonna change other things. And it's like, I wanna play Pokemon Yellow as Pokemon Yellow is. So I'm gonna leave in this cancellation. Plus, if any of you at home wanted to play through with Doduo and compare times with me, you would also have to cancel this animation. So I only think it's fair. However, when you have 10 plus resets on a trainer, it gets very frustrating having to do this every time because the time really is stacking up. And I wanna give Doduo the best possible result in its playthrough. So going through my mind is always the thought, should I save now? Because that will save time overall. In this case, I decided to finally go for the save. And part of the reason was that I was already saved inside of Lorelei's chamber. So like, I'm gonna be doing this battle no matter what at this level. I know that it's possible. It just takes luck. Yes, there is the option for me to black out having my HM mules faint as well, but I don't really wanna do that if I don't have to. Plus I was frustrated and I had started to get stubborn. I just really wanted to defeat Lorelei. And unfortunately, the order in which events had stacked up at this point had given me a false sense of confidence. Remember when I said I got very lucky against the Cloister and I knocked it out with Drill Peck? Yeah, when I first did that, I didn't know that that was very lucky. I was just like, yeah, Drill Peck takes it out in three hits, Body Slam also takes it out in three hits, so they're the same. However, what I was missing here is that the chance to paralyze on Body Slam dramatically improves Doduo's consistency. It helps against the Dugong, it also helps against the Cloister, and it can help against the Slowbro. And yeah, after about like three or four more resets, I realized my mistake. My mistake was initially saving in Lorelei's chamber. If I had not saved in her chamber, I would have just walked in fought her, and then when I reset, I would have been outside of the league, and I could have decided to train more if I wanted to. I think that if I had lost to her maybe like five or six times, and I was saved outside of her chamber, I would have not tried to double down on like using rare candies, teaching rest, all of these things. I probably would have just been like, yeah, Doduo can't do it, this fight's supposed to be hard, let's go and do something else. Like maybe go to the power plant and pick up an extra rare candy grind on some trainers that I hadn't fought until this point. But no, in this case, I am stuck in the league. And yes, Lorelei is the ultimate wall for Doduo. Just watch the reset counter because they stack up reset after reset after reset. By the way, I was streaming this playthrough and I think it was noticeable that I was very frustrated at this point. I was telling the chat like, I know that I should black out, I should do something else. I definitely should not be attempting this over and over again, but I was so frustrated and I just really wanted to prove that it was possible. Now I'm sure some of you will be thinking that Doduo is your favorite Pokemon. Like you love this cute little two-headed flightless bird, which can learn fly and sky attack. Drill Peck makes sense. Its beaks look like drills, but uh, the other two, they don't. I always imagine in my head that the Doduo like puts its two heads down horizontally and then spins around and uses them like helicopter blades to use fly. Anyways, yeah, that's uh, that's my personal lore. So you're probably thinking like, yeah, you're doing such a bad job with the Doduo. These results really shouldn't count. You should change your rules, something like that. Uh, no, this is why I do two playthroughs. I really want to get the best results that I can with each Pokemon, so I always give myself that chance to go in and fix whatever major mistakes I made in my first playthrough. But even I have limits, and by the time I had 50 resets, I was just like, okay, it is time to black out and try this a different way. Now the downside to blacking out here is that I've already used all of my rare candies, which means that training is going to be quite slow. Still, I can grab one more rare candy in the power plant, as I mentioned before, and then I can defeat trainers on Cycling Road, as well as on Route 15. There are a lot of trainers closely clustered together here, and that's what makes these my go-to training spots. My target level for this training is going to be level 67, then I can use one rare candy, go up to level 68, over a damage rounding threshold, and attempt Lorelei again. So let's see how it goes. In this case, the Dugong selects Rest, and that means I can set up fully with Agility. That's perfect. Then Drill Peck 1 hits the Dugong. Alright, that is nice. Next, I survive Cloister's Ice Beam on 35 hit points and move on to the Slowbro. Okay, the safe option here is definitely to use Rest, recover my health, and then set up with Amnesia if it's possible. The Slowbro gets a Surf and a Psychic in, which is quite bad. It also lowers my special. I decide to get a bit risky and mimic Amnesia at this point, and then I try to set it up. 
Unfortunately though, when the Slowbro hits with Surf, it knocks me out, so that wasn't a good choice. A few more resets later, I make it back to the Slowbro. And finally, I get set up fully with Amnesia. This also badge boosts me, so my attack stat is very high by the time this all finishes. You'll notice here that the Slowbro is actually lowering my special with Psychic, and then I can just reboost the special with Amnesia. This means every time this interaction occurs, I actually re-badge boost my attack stat, and I was intentionally doing this in the hopes that I can one-hit the Lapras with Drill Peck. I finish off the Slowbro, one-hit the Jinx, Lapras is last, I go for Drill Peck, please don't critical hit, it doesn't, and with that, I have defeated Lorelei finally. Okay, so that fight was absolutely brutal. I had some major misplays, like Doduo should not have this number of resets. It should probably just have been like level 70 or 73 for that fight. Anyways, we'll find out in my follow-up playthrough. For now, let's defeat the next trainer. He is the one trainer of the final six that is not elite, and uh, yeah, he's just terrible. Like, I can use Mimic to steal Dig here from the Onyx. That way I have super effective damage against the second Onyx. Um, it actually goes for Rock Slide and does so much damage to Doduo, but like, what's the Machamp gonna do? I guess it could get a critical hit with Karate Chop. That's kinda scary. I'm hoping here that Drill Peck will one hit, and it does. Okay, good. Next is Agatha, and of course I made some sacrifices against Lorelei to maintain Drill Peck just for this fight, and I am so glad that I did because Drill Peck is one hitting all of her ghosts. It actually doesn't one hit either the Golbat or the Arbok, but those Pokemon are pretty bad, so I can just one hit the final Gengar, and with that, I'm moving on to Lance. Okay, so Gyarados is first, and Drill Peck is gonna knock it out with two hits. That is perfect. Dragonair is next, and Drill Peck takes it down in a single hit. I accidentally mistimed my inputs here, and I clicked Drill Peck again against the second Dragonair, so no Ice Beam for me. Aerodactyl's next. I can kind of make up for my mistake on the Dragonair by mimicking Hyper Beam here. Hopefully it will do enough damage to knock the Dragonite out in a single hit. Here I decided to set up with Agility so that I'll boost my damage to make that a more likely event. However, that gives Aerodactyl time to finish Doduo off. I tried mimicking Hyper Beam on the Gyarados and then setting up against it with Agility and using Rest to heal, but eventually it knocks me out with a critical hit from Hyper Beam. That is the downside to taking your time against this thing. However, then in the next fight I tried Hyper Beam against it just to see how much damage it would do and uh, yeah, I get a critical hit, that's awesome. I sweep through the rest of Lance's team, and because of the damage Drill Peck is doing to the Aerodactyl, I can use it once and then finish it off with Hyper Beam. That leads to the Dragonite. Okay, I really hope that I one hit, because if I don't, I'm gonna have to recharge. I go for Hyper Beam and it's just barely not enough. Dragonite strikes back with Blizzard, but it misses. I need to recharge, Lance uses a Hyper Potion, and now I have a choice. Do I re-roll Hyper Beam damage or use Drill Peck? I decided to re-roll Hyper Beam, it doesn't get the damage it needs, and Dragonite finishes off Doduo with Blizzard. Okay, so I have a different strategy, and it would be really nice if I could use that strategy, because Gyarados just Hyper Beams and crits me, fine. In the next fight, I take it out with two Drill Pecks, and then I defeat the first Dragonair, but on the second one, I am going to use Mimic. And here, I am not going to Mimic Ice Beam, after all, Doduo has terrible special. Instead, I am going to mimic Rap. I do think that this is the first time I have ever used this strategy, and it is going to allow me to get by the Aerodactyl, as well as the Dragonite. Um, I just need to not miss with Rap. Luckily, I do not on the Aerodactyl. I get it down to low enough health and finish it off with Drill Peck. Next is Dragonite. I wrap it down to red health, and then I finish it off with Drill Peck. So, Doduo has made it to the champion at long last. Sand Slash is first. Against it, I really want to mimic Earthquake, so I have super effective damage against the Ninetales and the Jolteon. I do get taken to red health, but this doesn't really matter because I finish the Sand Slash off, and then after that, the Alakazam is basically free. This levels Doduo up, which is perfect for the badge boost glitch. And then here against the Executor, I made a mistake. I knocked it out with Drill Peck without getting set up, and as a result, I can't two hit the Cloister, so I lose. However, that's an easy fix because, like, the Executor is not gonna knock me out unless it gets very lucky. And, uh, yeah, in the next fight it does. It puts Doduo to sleep with Hypnosis, and, uh, yeah, then it just knocks me out with Barrage. Just great. However, that is not gonna repeat in the next fight. It actually almost does, but I get my rest in, heal up, set up with agility, and then I use Drill Peck to knock the Executor out. Next is Cloister. I have enough health that I can survive Ice Beam and knock it out in two hits, and that means there's only two Pokemon left. Just in case I like Gen 1 miss on the Jolteon or something, I decide to heal up against Ninetales. After all, it doesn't have very good moves. I use Earthquake, it knocks Ninetales out, Jolteon is last, I go for Earthquake, and it takes it down. 
So that's it, Doduo clocks in with a time of 1 hour 44 minutes and 56 seconds, with 64 resets at level 71, and this took 5 hours and 4 minutes of game time. Now I always present all 4 metrics here, because game time is actually more accurate to judge the Pokemon's performance when the player makes a major mistake like this. However, there are lots of reasons that I don't really like game time as a metric. There needs to be a way to account for the inconsistencies that the Pokemon just inherently has, and the two metrics that do that best are real time and reset. Sets. So I really think that these are the best two metrics to use, especially from a second playthrough. However, the more and more I do these challenges, I think that game time is the better metric for a first playthrough, and then real time is the far superior metric for a second playthrough. I did face Mewtwo with Doduo, and uh, yeah, it was very easy. I won on my first fight. So now let's jump into a second playthrough and see just how much time I can shave off Doduo's results. The ideal scenario here for a finish would be that I have less real time, less game time, and less resets, and Doduo finishes the game at a higher level. After all, it is going to need a higher level to defeat Lorelei at least semi-consistently. I leave the beginning of the game unchanged. I can just shave off the resets that I had against Brock here. I do defeat him at level 17. I think this is the best level. It gives a little bit more damage than level 16. Now, last time I had some resets on Misty, and that's just because the Starmie outspeeds Doduo. As you can see in this case, I'm only level 24, so I have 53 speed. I'm still not going to move first. There's an easy solution to that, though, because I can just skip Misty and head to the SSA. Here, I pick up Body Slam, and this move really improves my odds against her. After all, it is going to one-hit the Staryu now that Doduo is level 27, and it is going to two-hit the Starmie, plus it has the chance to paralyze. Also, making things even better, I outspeed. So that fight is totally trivial. Now to avoid any resets on Surge, I actually go through Rock Tunnel next, which means I need to defeat the self-destructing hiker. In this case, I don't get lucky, and he finishes me off in the first fight, but I do manage to take the victory on my second attempt. In this case, this is why I really like real time, because it accounts for the fact that Doduo had to have a reset here. Its strategy using Growl is just not consistent enough to always get through this fight on its first attempt. If I had instead used game time, it would have biased Doduo's performance towards the path where it gets the perfect luck in each one of these fights. Now because I reached Celadon City, I can train in Erica's gym and then fight her because she's very easy. Yes, I am doing this before Surge because I want as many levels as possible. Then when I backtrack to him at level 34, I have a guaranteed one hit on his Raichu with Body Slam and I move first. So yeah, that fight's trivial. So now it's time for the mid-game training, which I'm going to have to do to prepare for Lorelei. Now I'm addressing game time here because I have had some questions about it recently, so here's another reason I don't like game time. The metric is typically viewed as a way to remove player error from the playthrough's results. However, it doesn't actually function this way, because say I fight Lorelei at level 63 and then I realize that I need to train, and then I backtrack to Cycling Road, well, all of the time that I spent like flying and exiting buildings and walking around, all of that accumulates into the game time. So while resetting over and over doesn't actually cause the Pokemon to gain any time, changing up which trainer you're fighting does cause more game time to accumulate and kind of skews results just a little bit. So the best way to get accurate results in the least amount of time possible is to do the second playthrough and then streamline things. This will give us both a more accurate game time as well as a more accurate real time. Today with Oduo, I'm going to do a lot of training. I fight every trainer on Cycling Road, both Route 16 and Route 17. Then I go to Route 15 and I fight all of the trainers here. This brings Doduo up to level 46, and now it outspeeds Venomoth, so I can just fight Koga and take an easy victory here. By the way, at this level, Drill Peck is a guaranteed one hit. Now I did the training at these locations to avoid backtracking as much as possible. Next, I head to Sylph, and here I defeat every single trainer. Yes, every single trainer. This gives Doduo level 53 to face the rival. I really do not want to have resets here. And this fight is much easier in this case. The Ninetales, Kadabra, and Jolteon are all guaranteed one hits with Body Slam, but Sandslash and Cloyster aren't. I got really lucky in this fight because I got a critical hit against the Sandslash, and then I survived Cloyster's Aurora Beam, and after that, I've won. Because of all my training, I can now move first against all of Sabrina's Pokemon and defeat them easily. So I finish off all of Saffron with no backtracking. I just go to the city only once in the playthrough. Blaine's next, and here's where the good news stops. Because even at level 55, I do not have guaranteed two hits on all of his Pokemon. I only have a 96% chance to two hit the Arcanine. So that's good enough odds for me. Also, I'm using Body Slam here because Paralysis improves my odds slightly throughout the fight. Unfortunately, in this case, the Rapidash still moves, uses Growl, which is 
really annoying. I do paralyze the Arcanine. He uses Flamethrower, which burns Doduo, like, ugh, and then it knocks me out with Fire Blast. So that's a reset. I have to do this one one more time, and Arcanine almost takes me out, but I luckily make it through and defeat it. I fight two additional trainers in Giovanni's gym to bring Doduo up to level 57. Unfortunately, this fight isn't 100% consistent because if the Dugtrio uses Sand Attack, I could lose. That's what happens in my first attempt. But in the next fight, I use Earthquake to sweep, make it to the Rhydon, it hits with Rock Slide, Doduo survives, and I take it out. Against the rival, I uh, both misplay and get a little bit of bad luck. My duo has 153 speed, so it is going to move first against the Jolteon, but my brain was just like, use agility so that I outspeed the Jolteon. Then Ninetales uses Ember, burns Doduo, and uh, as a result, I lose. I still didn't figure out that I could skip the agility, but I still managed to win on the next attempt because I didn't get burnt. So even with the player error, Doduo is going to win, it just couldn't get burnt. I collect the rare candy from the power plant, so now I have 12 rare candies, and if I use 11 of them on Doduo, I can take it up to level 70, which is a higher damage rounding threshold than my previous time fighting Lorelei. But for this fight, I have corrected the mistakes I made last time, so I save outside of the league, and I also teach rest in the place of agility. This might seem weird, but it is the better choice because I want body slam on my moveset to make this fight more consistent. At this level, I have a guaranteed 2 hit on the Cloister, and Paralysis is going to dramatically improve my results. If I make it to Slowbro, then I can set up with Amnesia and take the win that way. In this playthrough, I only lost once with Doduo, so that is so much more consistent than it was last time. We don't talk about the next guy in follow-up playthroughs, so let's move on to Agatha. Here, Drill Peck is a guaranteed one hit on all of the ghosts. Strangely enough, there's actually an advantage to having Body Slam on my moveset here, because it has a chance to one hit the Golbat and the Arbok. It has a 50% chance to one hit the Golbat, by the way, I will only one hit the Golbat with Drill Peck if I get a critical hit. And then against the Arbok, it has an 80% chance to one hit. And in this case, I actually get the good damage ranges against both of them. Then I move on to the final Gengar. Unfortunately here, Drill Peck is not a guaranteed one hit. It has a 76% chance to one hit but that's still good enough. So let's move on to Lance. And at level 71, if I mimic Hyper Beam, I have a guaranteed one hit against the Gyarados. So that's great. That levels me up to level 72. I can use Body Slam to knock out both of the Dragonairs and then Body Slam into Hyper Beam to knock out the Aerodactyl. Remember, you don't have to recharge in Generation 1 if this move knocks the opponent's Pokemon out. And then after that, I have to get a bit lucky. At level 72, Hyper Beam has a 58% chance to knock the Dragonite out. In this case, I uh, just miss, get hit by Thunder. Doduo survives on 9 hit points, but it gets paralyzed, and then Thunder finishes me off. So while I get the unfavorable damage roll in the next fight against Dragonite, I just want to explain my logic here, because you might be like... Why not just get one more level, be level 73 over a damage rounding threshold, and one hit the Dragonite with Hyper Beam? Well, it's not that simple. I genuinely tried to get level 73 for this fight, and it's very challenging. That's because Doduo starts the fight at level 71, and it levels up to 72 after the Gyarados. That means if I use my one remaining rare candy right before Lance, I still won't be level 73 by the time Dragonite comes out. So I would need to train earlier on in the playthrough. And what it ends up being is that I don't just need to train one more level earlier on in the playthrough, I need to train two more levels earlier on in the playthrough. Also at level 73, Dragonite is still not a guaranteed one hit with Hyper Beam. It goes from a 60% chance to one hit to an 80% chance to one hit. So I had to decide, do I want the increased consistency at the cost of some time, or do I want the potential to have a slightly lower time at the expense of this consistency. In this case, I chose the riskier option and it didn't benefit me, but I think even if I did the training earlier on, I am allowed to reset here once or twice and it won't waste enough time to be a net loss in this situation. Anyways, in the third fight, things get really close because the Aerodactyl almost knocks Doduo out, like it survived on one hit point, but then I get the favorable roll with Hyper Beam and that's it. Unfortunately, I do not have good news for the champion because there is luck involved here and it all comes down to Cloister. I have a 30% chance to two hit, which is nice. I could also cause Paralysis with Body Slam, which would be helpful, and what I really need to avoid is the Cloister using two Ice Beams in a row, or arriving at the Cloister with low health. I think once again Doduo got the worst case scenario here because the Cloister knocks me out twice before I finally get it in my third attempt. With it out of the way, I can one hit the Ninetales, and then one hit the Jolteon with Earthquake. No agility is required. So I was able to reduce my real time and my resets by a lot. I am very happy with this. Doduo finishes at level 73 instead of level 71, so that's also what I wanted to have happen, but was my game time lower? And the answer is, 
Yes, of course it was, because I prevented a lot of backtracking. Okay, so because it's a new year, I've decided to shuffle around my tier list. After all, after I did the Magikarp playthrough, I started to notice that it was a bit top-heavy. So this is how things stand now after that shuffle. You also note on the right-hand side, I'm showing you what threshold the Pokémon are cut off at from getting into that tier. Additionally, I'll just note that these are my best results with every Pokémon, so a Pokémon is never ranked lower if its first playthrough was awful which really was the case for Doduo today. So where do its second playthrough results earn it a spot in the tier list? Well, it was slightly faster than Pokemon like Horsey and Hitmonchan, but slower than Pokemon like Kabuto and Aerodactyl. So today, Doduo earns itself a spot in the middle of the E tier. Like, subscribe, ring the chime echo, and comment because I gotta read them all. If you support me on Patreon or through YouTube memberships, there are some insane exclusive benefits coming to you in the next few weeks, so stay tuned for those. This year, because we have got much faster at producing videos, everyone who supports me directly is in for a serious treat. Either way, if you made it this far in this video, you are incredible. I will see you in my next one. Okay, so it is time to bring Oak back into my Pokemon Yellow series. Yes, a lot of you have commented like, where did he go over December? Well, I had a lot of videos to make and we just didn't have time to squeeze him in, but now he's back to stay. If you're wondering, this fight is actually in the game's code, but there's no way to access it through regular play. What I did was I just coded a custom ROM and then I used that to access this fight whenever I want. And in this case, you can see that Doduo really doesn't struggle here until it gets to the Blastoise. My Body Slam only does half, it hits with Hydro Pump, which takes me all the way down to 43 hit points. And then I don't finish it off, but luckily it just goes for withdraw and I take it out on the next turn. Last is the highest leveled trainer Pokemon in the entire game, which is Gyarados at level 70. I go for Body Slam, it does half. And luckily this thing chooses Dragon Rage, leaving Doduo with only three hit points left before I finish it off. So that's it, Doduo was able to beat Oak on its first attempt.